What is up everybody? Welcome to this very special Friday session. You are about to be in on the inside discussion between myself, Eric, and our guest for today's session, Sam Hope from Early Bird AI. As always, this is a very candid, open discussion about what we've all been up to in our businesses. We dive into what Sam's been doing at Early Bird. We talk about his launch party. We talk about his current sales velocity. Uh, we talk about what it's like to be in a business that's gone from you know 85 days ago, we had a meeting in our lounge room to a six figure a month business already after just 69 days or something like that of trading. Absolutely cool discussion. After that, we talk about our visit to the diary of a CEO event up in Brisbane with Stephen Bartlett. We unpack what our biggest learnings were from that event. We also then talk about the podcast, this podcast, and about how we're getting now approached very early stages by some advertising agencies wanting to run ads inside of the pod, what that means financially for us, whether we're going to do it or not, um, and so much more. And we also talk about something big at the end, which is our first live event that we're going to be doing for Unemployable, basically a live version of the podcast for you guys to come along and hang around with all the other unemployable people around the world that listen to the pod, and that's pretty cool as well. So hopefully enjoy it. Remember, drop a comment below, listen to the end, because it is a lot of fun right to the end, lots of good stuff, and uh, I'm sure you're going to love it. Remember, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Unemployable. This is your Friday session with the team. We've got James, we've got Eric, and we've got a VIP special guest in the house, Sam Hope from Early Bird AI, who the, until now has been, you know, behind the scenes sponsor of the pod, but we've got him standing in for Mark this week. And he's going to join us to have a bit of an open riff about what's been going on over at Early Bird, what challenges they're facing, just like uh, we always talk about on these Friday sessions. And I want to say, you know, the reason we didn't get that second Friday session out because we had quite a few messages of people saying, what happened to the second one? We were hanging out for it. it was simply that that second one we interviewed, oh, sorry, we talked about one of our clients who has this really big deal going and it's not quite inked yet. So we couldn't release the pod until it is inked. So I apologize guys for missing that second one, but we are going to now uh, commit to making sure that we do get it out on time every Friday where we just sit around and riff. So James, you've just been down in Sydney. You're back in Queensland. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm very well indeed. It was a, a good trip to Sydney. It's good to see a few old faces that I haven't seen for quite a while, but um, it is uh, good to be back. Um, as you get a bit older, the uh, change of pace certainly is um, welcome. Uh, um, and how good is it at the moment, right? you got the gun barrel view down Burley Beach. Certainly do. No, it was, um, it's, it's a good, good place to call home, but it was nice to visit, um, to go back down there and and uh, just check it out and see what they, how the other other half live. Um, you always get that that cool Sydney vibe when you go down, right? It's awesome to visit, go to a great restaurant. Yeah, you yeah. went to a good restaurant as well? I did, went to Margaret. Um, I, I love to cook and Neil Perry's one of my favourite chefs. I've got all his books and, and try and emulate his, his food. But um, I think I texted you a message. I said, if you could capture the net, worth, the net worth of the people who are in that restaurant in that given snapshot of time, you probably would have 50x a lotto win. Um, there was a few guys I won't mention that are in there that have got bees in front of their names. And yeah, uh, yeah. it's certainly a, uh, a, different, uh, a different vibe, but uh, fun nonetheless. Good old good. Sydney. Good old Sydney. And Eric, how are you, mate? What's going on in your world? I'm good. I'm actually heading to Sydney tomorrow with the family. I'm going to ha go hang out with some, some friends down there for a few days and Come take on, a little bit of a break. Come on, you don't have friends, Eric. Come yeah, on, just you, just now, you. Now we know you're lying. Fuck. But I, um, not like James, he hasn't seen his friends for five to seven years, he says, and he calls them friends. But I mean, last time I seen mine was maybe six months ago, so it looks like I'm doing a bit of a better job, but at the same time, yeah. Looks like you're concentrating on yourself there a bit because you're looking a bit buff, mate. So what do they say about you when you haven't seen him? Buff, they haven't mate, seen you in five years. Buff, man, I'm just doing the work, buddy. What are you doing? Eating the fucking lollipops. <laughs> do you, do they sell I'm the, stressed, Do okay? they sell those T-shirts in men's size or just boy's size? <laughs> no, mate, that, that's extra, extra large. <laughs> no, but it's uh, it's exciting. I'm, I'm uh, really enjoying these uh, Friday pods. I know we've only done a couple. We haven't released one, but it's something that's in the calendar that I get quite excited about because... There's, uh, you know, not really a topic, too many topics to talk about um, that that we're speaking about prior to the pod. So we're just sitting here and, and yeah, riffing and the, bantering. The, the feedback from the first one was uh, was pretty overwhelming too to, to go back through it all. So it certainly landed. And uh, we got more feedback on that pod than pretty much any of the episodes that we'd done. 
Um, so that's really cool. I got one funny feedback, which I don't know if I've told you about, James. I got it in the DMs. This bloke it asked me. It sounds like it's about to be angled at me. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> this, this bloke said, uh, I love James on the pod. Thanks for doing it. But um, I had to pull out an urban dictionary to understand some of the phrases that he said. He didn't know what wet behind the ears meant. And, and I was <laughs> laughing and I was like, well, you probably defied it as a younger guy. James is a country um, boy from Glen Innes. So. Well, glad he pulled the Urban Dictionary, not Eric's. Well, well, well if he had the question, I'm sure other people have the question. So what is wet behind the ears, James? Oh, mate, it's like a newborn, mate. Yeah. A newborn baby, wet yeah. behind the ears. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Eric just wanted everyone else to understand. James James has all these great Aussie uh, isms. phrases. Isms. Isms, isms, yeah. Country yeah. boys. I actually, I've actually, now you, now you mentioned, I know who, uh, who that uh, culprit was, who needs a little bit of an ed- education um, he must be might be a restaurateur. Oh, I don't know. I, I just responded. I know exactly who it was. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. No tip for you. <laughs> no tip for you. So, uh, uh, Sammy, how are you, mate? What's going on? Oh, I'm just all guns blazing. I'm super pumped to be here. It's um, it's it's cool to be here live. Hey, yeah. Like I've been here so many times, right? And I, you know, when you guys were building it and whatnot, and to be here live. You know, in the flesh, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you were here all the way through, right? Like you watched this thing transform from just like this empty garage room to what it is now. And for those who don't know who Sam is, Sam is the co-founder of Early Bird, who's been sponsoring the pod up until this uh, point, Early Bird AI. So um, Mark's away in Melbourne. So we thought we'd bring Sam in because he brings a bit of youth to the joint. How old are you, Matt? 22. 22. And, mate, give us a snapshot. Like, what's it like inside the life of Sam Hope and Chris Jeong right now? Um, give us a bit of context about the journey up to this point, just high level, and then what, what's going on for you guys? Because we just had an epic event over there. We'll talk about that in a second. But just I want the listeners to hear just the high level of, of what, what the story's been so far. Yeah, look, it's incredible to see what we've been able to do in just, like, what? It's been 10 weeks, 85 days, I think, to the date. It's right. um, unbelievable and it's just all guns blazing. We're just, look, it's massive. It's super intense, um, but incredibly rewarding as well. Um, I mean, the event that we ran on Saturday was just super cool. We had 20 people in an intimate room. We did our first AI workshop. Um, the Friday before that, we had our launch event where we had, what it was, 75 really high business people within our network that came to celebrate the launch. And, you know, in just a few months, it's just, it's just crazy, but going well. You began 85 days, right, when we met in our apartment. And I think you said that nine days in, we were incorporated. Is that right? Like it took, it took nine days from the meeting to get the company formed. 14 days after that was your first sale. And now it's 60 do, 62 days in. And you guys are, I th- what, what's the trailing revenue of the business for the last 30 days? Just to give people context. Just shy of 100 grand. Yeah. Which is amazing. Well done, yeah. mate. Must yeah. be crazy. It's just like, I mean, um, Chris, so he, he wrapped up this morning at, quarter to five yeah. um, at about the time that I rocked up. I'm the early bird, what, what, Chris is the what, night owl. What do, you, what do you mean quarter to, he finished that quarter, at 4.45 a.m. he finished work? Yeah, I think he was in bed by half past five and he got back in at 10. Wow. Yeah, no shit, yeah. That's crazy. That's, I mean, that's, that's good for people to hear. That, that event was awesome, by the way. Like, um, you know, I talk about vision standards recruitment and I didn't really know. I, I kind of knew what to expect when we turned up, but you guys really went above and beyond. Like you did a really good job, mate. Like we walked up the stairs. You had the swag. You know, everybody had their t-shirt and their diary and the water bottle. You got that big step and repeat screen built. Um, you did a really good job, and I think I think everybody that was there totally appreciated that. Food was good too. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> mate, it was an awesome event. It's the, it's the only way to do it, right? Like, I mean, you've got to do things properly. Yeah. Um, and we're very grateful. Chris and I are very grateful to have been surrounded by you guys. Like, look at what you guys have done here. Yeah. Um, and we're just kind of, um, we've taken all of that in and that's the new standard. Mm. And so um, we're really happy with how the event went. We're, um, we're keen to do more. Mm. Um, and it's a, yeah, it's an exciting place. Well, I loved how the slides, like Chris, for the first part of the morning, all the slides were generated by, um, what was the program? The... Um, the, the image program. It's all, it's all through AI. Yeah. All through AI, yeah. yeah. I can't remember the name of it. But Mid- Mid-Journey or something? Mid-Journey, yeah. Yep. So all the, all the slides were from like made by Mid-Journey and they were super like compelling and they drew you in and mm. you just crushed it, mate. Like, and, and I think the other thing you did really well is you captured a lot of content on the day with uh, borrowing our videographer, one of our videographers. You captured a lot of content to amplify that on your socials and out there in the world. So for everybody listening who's running a business, that's something we've done really well over the years is you run events, um, 
but you capture those events and you use the capturing of the events to amplify it. We're looking at doing some bus advertising at the moment for the pod where we put all our faces on the side of a Gold Coast City Council bus Inclu and running it up. Including his? Fuck in me. Including his. Well, we'll and, get it, we'll but get on it. yours, mate, we're going to put your Tinder profile as well. Well, So people can hit, yeah. hit you up there. You know, we'll actually get a on. discount if I put mine on there. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to pay double the price with your head on it. <laughs> actually, let's, let's, talk, let's talk to that, actually. Before you do that, <laughs> Sam, 22 years old. Yeah. First off, I just want to say I appreciate you so much and what you've done. And I would... I'm 40, and I would would have never thought I'd be in business with a 22 year old. Mm. Now, you mentioned earlier wet behind the ears. What does that mean again? A newborn. Newborn, so, so fairly new, young. Yeah. yeah. Can you do me a favor and take off Sam's headphones and have a feel behind those <laughs> ears and see how wet they are? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, Sam, for 22 years old, I keep saying this when I introduce you to people, and I'm like, he's 22. It, it, that's at crazy. 22, I had not much, you know, entrepreneurial experience at all, but I wasn't really interested in it yet. It wasn't until kind of my mid-20s is when I really started my entrepreneurial journey. So for you at 22, I can I can imagine what you will be like when you're 32, you know. Just keep crushing, mate. Unreal. Yeah, keep crushing. And I, just to finish the point, as I said, what we're going to do with that bus um, thing is we're excited about it because we, we will put it on the bus, it'd be good promo, but we'll capture it on the bus and amplify it on socials as well. So that's a that's a that's a good strategy these days with the world that's that, that we live in. So um Sam, what do you like what, what what was your what what's the week looking like for you guys? Like what are you dealing with? Yeah, so obviously startup phase you're you're wearing so many hats, right? Mm -hmm. So we're we're doing everything under the sun. So nine to five it's mainly dealing with new business and cl existing clients. So sales calls, discovery calls um, onboarding calls and then um, most of our team are kind of global based at the moment so we've got a um, full-time um, guy who's an absolute gun based out of Pakistan, full-time lady based out of the Philippines um, and a part-timer in Poland mm -hmm. and then we've got the team of three here um, in, the, in the HQ on the Gold Coast and you know nine to five dealing with our clients and then the four hours before nine, four hours after five it's putting the walls up because you know when we, we start to grow this company and we're trying to recruit and bring on 18 players We've got to have walls for them to come into. You can't just get them in and say, okay, go. You've got to actually have processes and systems. Um, and so we're just building all that out and, and um, you know, building it right from the get-go, um, building good systems, strong systems from the get-go um, so we don't have to double back later. That is something I've got to say. Like every time, so Eric and I go in for the listeners, what, is it every two weeks? Every two weeks. Every two weeks we sit down with the boys and we, we get a report and an update on where it's all going. I don't think I've ever been involved in a company where where they're so onto the like the the charts and the systems and like what software you're using Monday, isn't it? Monday.com for the project management. Project management Monday.com is so well organized and and just it's unbelievable what you're doing. So yeah, you could see where everything's at. You know, like you got those. It looks like a battery charger. You know, this one's at twenty percent. This project's at fifty percent. This one's at eighty yeah. percent, and you can all in one dashboard, basically. You can see the value of the pipeline of leads that have been presented to, the closed business, business yet to close, and you've got, in your business, you've got upfronts and annual recurring revenue. It's really, really impressive what you're doing. James. Yeah, no, I should say Monday, we use Monday as well, and it's it's super intuitive to use as well. And um, we use it for a whole raft of things, onboarding the whole shebang right through to, not quite as, as, as much as you guys do, but that uh, super duper tool, that's for sure. I've never used it, and, and now that I see it, from the reporting side, I'm like, man, this is It's a bit incredible. different to your asanas and whatnot. It's, um, I think, just got a form, few more use cases, really, hasn't it? Yeah, totally. And it's, um, look, there's so much you can automate now. Like, all of these tools you can just integrate together. Um, there's actually a lot you can do with a small team. Yeah, it is amazing. And so you guys, um, I mean, you're, you're probably, I mean, it's only 85 days since you started. Your first day was... Day was um, 78 days ago, you made your first sale or something. Or yeah, 60 seven, days. Yeah, what, yeah, 62 days ago. So you're basically now in the process of delivering those first solutions to customers, which is incredible. And, and it's all really just been, uh, you know, well, what I want to say for listeners, what's cool about this story is it, you haven't messed around. We've basically made a very simple offer. If you want to get a free audit of your business, talk to Early Bird, and then you've been the guy that's actually on the end of that audit mostly. Is that right? We're both leading them to begin with. Okay. Um, yeah. And so you're just having a chat with people and then going back with a proposal mm -hmm. and then people are either saying yes or no. And guys, that's, 
I reckon that's really powerful because so many people screw around forever trying to do everything. Early birds at logo was general. You generated that on ChatGPT, right? Yep. ChatGPT in Canva. <laughs> there you go. Some Resor- people, being resourceful. Yeah. Some people spend months and months sort of going through that and loads and loads of money. You just went like, let's jump on the phone. Let's talk to real customers. Let's make them an offer and let's see if they sign up and they're signing up, which is great. That's exactly right. It's just... um getting things rolling from the get-go, um, getting the revenue in the door, and then just maintaining that delivery standard, which mm. is massive, and just make sure that we're really happy with with all of the amazing solutions we're building. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, another thing that we did this week, guys, Sunday night, um, we went up to, James wasn't there, but all of us, and uh, you were in Sydney, but a whole bunch of, all of the early bird crew, all of the um, uh, unemployable crew, we went and saw Stephen Bartlett at the Brisbane Convention Exhibition Centre. For those who don't know who Stephen is, Stephen is the uh, founder of uh, Diary of a CEO podcast, which is the second largest podcast, I believe, in the world and the fastest growing podcast, so the second largest behind uh, Joe Rogan. And uh, he's also the youngest dragon on Dragon's Den UK. And we went backstage beforehand to meet Stephen. We met uh, Grace, his marketing manager, as well. Um, what was your I'm going to ask you first Eric what was your impressions because you met uh, Stephen backstage got a chance to speak to him and Grace his marketing manager and some of the team what was your first impressions and your impressions of the night honestly my first impression was was very 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 calm energy Mm. you know like very just calm very smooth um, made you feel important you know asking you asking the right questions you know what do you Yes, about what do you do? And then, well, Ryan, another friend that was there before, mentioned about the podcast. And he's like, you got to get on their podcast. He's like, well, send me an email. You know, it's just send me an email. So I'm like, oh, we got to get that email sent. So Perry, we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to do that. But um, yeah, just very, um, he was very intuitive, just really, really nice guy, you know. And he's a lot taller and bigger than what I thought. It's, it's very interesting, you know, when you see someone on on YouTube, um, and you've never met them, and then you meet them, you're like, oh, this guy's a bit of a unit, you know? Quite fit, actually. So he obviously takes care of himself, and I, I just, it's hard to believe that, uh, he mentioned he's involved in about 40 businesses, he's traveling the world, runs this you know, unbelievable podcast, stays fit, like, it's just the headspace that you yeah. would need you know, to do what he does is unbelievable. It it was a full house, right? Like the Brisbane Convention Exhibition Centre was full. And that would probably be 3,000 people, I would guess, two and a half, three thousand people. Um, These podcasters at that level are like the new rock stars. We saw Andrew Huberman a few weeks before and Huberman compared to Stephen, not even in the same ballpark. Well, like we walked out of Huberman and wanted our money back. It was shit. Um, and uh, yeah, he just rambled on about stuff that was irrelevant, boring, disorganized. Stephen went for three hours with an intermission in the middle. Yeah. Um, and I honestly believe that it may have been the densest, most interesting, powerful, moving, helpful piece of personal development and life development that I've maybe ever done. It was that good. Yeah. Like the production, I think, was off the charts. The slides were incredible. He did not miss a beat. He connected with the audience by remembering names of the people who went back for the back to stage experience. He says, hey, Kelly, you were telling me about this. And hey, Michael, you were telling me about that. And you're like, he's not looking at notes on his hand here. He's remembered them. Yeah. Um, I, I found the night extraordinary. I thought he well, was just on a whole nother level. For you guys here on the, on the panel, because obviously I wasn't there, what was your number one take, or number two, ta- two top takeaways from the, from the event, knowing that you're in the, the, the podcasting space and the media space? I'll tell you my, one of my top ones, and then you guys can go for it. First of all, just to put some context around the podcast, because people don't realise how big that podcast is. Mm. So that podcast generates 30 million US a year in revenue. Uh, profit of about 15 million US a year and growing exponentially. He said on stage that night that uh, at current growth, I think it's in five years, he'll have 90 million subscribers, which is just bananas when you think about it. Um, uh, he gets 50 million downloads, I think it is a week or something. Uh, it's, just, it's just out of control how successful that's been for him. I think my biggest takeaway was around team. He said he he played a clip of Steve Jobs where 
uh, I think it was Walter Isaacson asked him, what is, would you say is your best um, creation out of the Apple uh, products? And Steve thought about it and said, my best production is the team. It's none of the products. And uh, Steve made the point that all entrepreneurs, their uh, number one job is recruitment. And he spends more time on recruitment than he does any other aspect because he said he's now come to understand that products are secondary to people. And most of us get obsessed about products. But he said if you get the right people, the people are a result of products. Tesla is not Elon Musk. Tesla is the result of the people that Elon Musk has coalesced around a vision. The Tesla motor car is the product of that team effort. Um, the Apple computer is a product of the team effort. And that makes absolutely perfect sense because there's only a very limited way that one individual could create anything great. This podcast, if it's going to be great one day, is going to be the result of a team effort. There's so much just in making this podcast. I can't do it on my own. Eric can't do it on its own. It's a collective. And the other powerful thing that he said, he showed, he showed some really powerful videos. Um, I might talk about the spider one in a minute, but the domino one was really amazing where he yep. got a single domino and he said that one domino can knock over another domino that's one and a half times its own weight. And if you had line dominoes up, I think it's by the 30th domino, it would knock over the size of the Empire State Building. And if you stop and think about that and you visualize it, there's actually a really cool video on YouTube that you can see where this is demonstrated, where this tiny little domino that's like, you know, maybe a centimetre high is lined up within three metres, it's knocking one over that's nearly 500 kilos in weight. Mm. Uh, it just goes boom, 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 boom. And he said, building any business, and particularly my podcast, is a result of those 1% improvements um, in all areas compounding together over time. And he gave the example of his own podcast saying that there was one thing that he changed 10 seconds into the way his podcast is structured that resulted in a 15% uptick or something in a subscription rate. And that, that, if you put that in over time, instead of being at 80 million subscribers in uh, five years or whatever it is, he said he would be at like 40 million. So literally 40 million less subscribers from that one little improvement 10 seconds into his video amplified over time and across all videos. It's just like that mentality is just incredible. I'm assuming you got that one tip. What's that? I'm assuming you He didn't actually tip. reveal what the one tip is, ah. but I did write a lengthy email to the entire team the next day. Greg, who's in here today, would have got that email, and Eric, you got that email, where I basically articulated this and said, I want you to study the absolute balls out of this <laughs> Diary of a CEO uh, podcast in every single way. And mm -hmm. um, He talked about it being a testing lab and how they just basically test absolutely everything over and over and over again. And um, because if they're doing it, there's a reason. Mm. So that was, I mean, that's a few things, but um, that was my, what about you, Sammy? What was like some of your big takeaways? It was just phenomenal. It was one of those ones where you just walk out and go, where's the recording? I need to go watch this again. Yeah. I actually voice recorded it. The whole thing? About two hours and 20 minutes of it. Right. Oh, dude, really? Yeah. I want that. Copyright yeah. yeah. infringement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, ahead, it, it, no it, was, it was an absolute cracker event. Um, it was so value dense, wasn't it? Oh um, my God. Recruitment, uh, people, leadership, um, everything at what, 30, 31, unbelievable. Um, I had one big takeaway, which was he said imposter syndrome builds confidence. And he said that if you, if you haven't got that sort of fear, that imposter syndrome, and you're not kind of working at the threshold of your competency, um, you've got to change something. And it was just a great reminder. And I mean, he's obviously doing something right, right? That's an interesting thought, isn't it? So yeah. he's basically saying that if you're not at the edge of feeling like you're a fraud, you're playing it too safe. Is that kind That's of... exactly what he said. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that and it makes sense because he's 30 years old, right? Mm. He's obviously had that because the rooms he's in, he's, he's dealing with billionaires, right? And so he would be... He'd, you just At every single level, he'd be at that again and again and again. Yeah, sure. And he talked a lot about AI too. I mean, you're in the AI space, of course, but that bit where he talked about like... Um, what's going to disrupt me like what's that and he said ai is definitely going to disrupt podcasting which which is what he's made his um, yeah yeah he said the biggest on. risk of wiping doak out is ai and yeah. he said he said well what, what he wanted to do was participate in wiping him out with ai yeah and so he embraced it and went in and um i think he's, he's got a team now he's got three people working yeah. full time on using ai to try and disrupt him and so he he actually played in the in the room 
uh, a clip from an F1 podcast, Formula One podcast, and one that he's doing for English football, where the script was written by AI, the intro music and the voice were all mm -hmm. um, AI from start to finish. And so basically he's working on trying to build out a network of podcasts that are completely AI generated um, and then he can sell ad revenue or something. Yeah, and the, the, he spoke about metrics straight away. He said there was an 8% retention difference between yep. the real and the AI, and he's just getting the team to work that 8% down to 7, then to 6, then to 5, then to 4. Um, so, yeah, me he's metrics-driven, isn't he? Well, yeah, he basically said the first podcast he put up was all AI. There was like an 80% um, retention difference. Like People were dropping off, like let's say, five minutes into the podcast and going, oh, this is just boring. But then they made improvements and improvements. Now they're up to 80%... Uh, 80 uh, 8 variance 8, between 8 the, the variance real and AI. Between Diary of a CEO, which is the best podcast in the world, probably from a retention point of view, from the standard, and the AI is within 8% of it already. And, and uh, he was just like, <laughs> wow. And then, of course, he dropped the news that Flight Stories or Flight Studio, sorry, is being launched where he's going to have his own podcast network like Valuetainment and so on. I love when he... Uh just the whole recruitment side, you know, basically saying that he's a recruitment company. That's that's what he does. And some of the people that he's recruiting, he's talking to for five years, some of them six months. Like to me, that's, that's a, you know, pursuing someone for that long is, is unbelievable. I don't know if you guys recall, but he says that he's looking at about a thousand resumes a week, mm -hmm. every week, looking through a thousand resumes just to find those, you know, top, top A players. Um, and again, just with the one percent, you know, uh, compounding over time. When what he was saying, the one percent, we celebrate a lot of the one percent. You know, they have they have a DOAC group chat, maybe a WhatsApp um, chat or whatever it is, and he, they even celebrate. He's like, we celebrate everything. We ha we just recently uh, replaced the air freshener <laughs> in the in the podcast studio, and everyone's celebrating. You know, <laughs> yeah. and they're celebrating. You know, even small things. But again, those small things just compound over time, over time, over time. And his he's really setting the standards, right? Similar to what we're trying to do here. But the biggest thing is, you can't just set the standards and you, you know, uh, uh, live by those standards. Everyone has to live by those standards and that's where that compound comes from and and that and whole the fastest way to ensure whole, that is great recruitment processes uh, yeah the whole uh, team building you know so. did you get much from grace the, the marketing lady did we, was it was she open to a conversation it was more of a oh, she was always with people we, yeah. we had a quick chat with her got a photo with her um grace andrews is her name if you google her or go to youtube and put in grace andrews interview yeah. so grace is his head of marketing mm. she's super nice in real life um She's only really young. She's 26, but man, she is an absolute weapon. So she was really cool as well. Yeah, and the other thing, he's, like uh, Sam said, he's 30 years old and he's involved in 40, 40, 40 different companies, you know, as well as... And they're well not all small. I mean, the, some of these some are of hundreds them. of millions of dollars in yeah. market cap. Well, yeah. uh, Whip's 3.6 billion, so mm -hmm. I mean, he's a, a major in that. And, yep. uh, and then he's got the nutrients companies as well, yeah. so... I, I, I love the the example he used with the NFT, with the ape that he bought for two hundred fifty three thousand dollars or whatever it is. That's now worth, I don't know, ten grand. He showed it actually. And showed he actually the showed and it. the transaxion yeah, where he paid like, two hundred and fifty grand. Yeah, for it. but he started learning a lot about you know NFTs and AI and 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 this type of thing, and it led him down another another business opportunity from buying that NFT. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting because you look at. The podcast as an example when we started unemployable we're like we're starting a podcast you know not long after all of a sudden we're involved in an ai business you know and then who knows where else you know you can invest mm -hmm. just from having the podcast initially so i think it, what he means by that is just you have to be in it you got to be doing something he's talking about leaning into yes. leaning into change and technology did now quick question for you did either of you guys download the app you mentioned that he was into and gary v was already into air chat did no, you catch that you know what i didn't but i just got a message a dm from from a follower actually you just reminded me i got a dm on instagram from a follower 
adding me to it. Ah, uh, there you go. Well, you should accept it because yeah. I downloaded it. What's, it's, uh, like it's, a, like called, a, it's called Air Chat. Like a clubhouse sort of invite where it's invite only. For yes, now, it is. Yeah. It creates a virality. It's created by Naval Rubicant. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, and, and Naval, is, as he's commonly known, and he mentioned it in passing saying, so just recently, like another example of leaning into something, I, I downloaded this latest thing that people are talking about at the very, very inner circles of technology and it's called Air Chat. <laughs> And, you know, the logo actually looks a bit like me, doesn't it, mate? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you can find that in post. Air oh, chat mate, logo. That it's is It's just amazing. like a smiley face with these big white teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually just messaged him. He said, yeah. do you have access to air chat, Eric, or would you like me to send you an invite? So yeah, I'm so like, I put I, 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 You need an invite to get in. So I put on my socials the other day, has anybody got an invite to air chat for me? And one guy out of 50,000 people ping me straight away said I don't want to hook you up that's cool but it's actually kind of cool it's, a, it's kind of like a, a, it's like a voxer like voice notes but it translates the voice note using AI into so it creates a, an AI generated image along with the voice note so you can sort of say hey has anybody got a recommendation for Gold Coast restaurants and it creates this AI and it's kind of really interesting but anyway Stephen was basically saying I'm getting in there early and I'm leaning into these things because you've got to be on the cutting edge of them and always curious. One, one thing I loved as well before we move off Steve Bartlett was I also loved when he played that ant video. So he showed an ant crawling across a piece of paper and then um, they just got a pen and they just drew a circle around the ant as it was making away. And as soon as it got to the edge of the circle because they drew the circle around the ant, the ant stopped and then it tried to go another way and it would not get out of that circle because it had, you'd put this pen line on the paper and they did the same thing with a spider and it wasn't until the spider accidentally stumbled over the pen line that it realised it wasn't a barrier and then it, it wouldn't stop at any others. And he talked about how beliefs are basically a collection of old memories that guide everything and, and, and show, the same in humans, how we are basically uh, captured in these prisms of beliefs. But it was such a powerful thing to see demonstrated you know, uh, on a video. There, there was so much in the night. I. I just can't recommend if you ever get the opportunity to see Stephen Bartlett speak live, he is one of those guys that exemplifies the saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. And I felt like um, Huberman, when he turned up, ill-prepared, uh, boring, uh, just, just, it was just was shit. What it was did like, you think? Well, yeah, Huberman, it was just like, is this entertainment or is it education? It, it was, was neither. Of, yeah. It was just dead set boring. He, what I loved about Steve Bartlett is he spoke for three uh, three hours or so, right, with a twenty five minute break in between, but he told one story the whole time, multiple stories in between, one arc, but there was one arc. The framework hit, it was the framework, but he hit every single one, and it was a story the whole way, and how it related to him and his life, and and it was, and it really delivered on the pro. It was called Life and Business with Stephen Bartlett. Yep. And it really did deliver his yep. thoughts on life and business and yep. the inter intersection of both. So it, It's very hard. I mean, Adam, you've done plenty of speaking, but to engage an audience of about 3,000 people for three hours, and I look around a lot, right? So I'm looking at people seeing, because it, it finished at about quarter after 11 at night. And by the end of it, I was fading just because I was tired, but I was still so engaged. And I was looking around and everyone, everyone was engaged and nobody was leaving. I don't think I saw a person leave the room <laughs> no. nearly for the whole night. No. I mean, it was just, and he didn't do any cartwheels. There was no jumping up and down. It was just pure quality yeah. content. Did you, yeah. did you notice the, well, the, the, the music, the very yes. faint music yes. in the background? Yeah, so the, the whole time there was like this faint piano music in the background as it was, it was drawing you into the it story. Was. And the slides, like where it started off with like, this is the arc of tonight. You talked about the arc of journey you know and, and showed everest but then on the slide like these clouds are gently going across and then when you moved it moved you into the tent on the mountain and then out of the tent it was just yeah it was kind of this a lot of thought a, a lot, lot of thought, of thought and preparation as if he's got you know the one, time to do that one percent it's just the one percent and uh yeah just extraordinary dude so yeah, definitely. You can see why when you get up close and personal to a guy like that, why he is where he is in life. And I wish him all the very best because he's a, he's a legend of a dude. Um, <clears throat> let's move on. I want to talk a little bit about um, our own podcast for a minute because I think that um, some people might find this interesting. We got contacted this week by a, uh, uh, an advertising agency for the first time through our contact form on unemployable.com.au and saying, hey, we've got advertisers that would like to advertise mid-roll on your podcast. 
And uh, that was cool, Cer certainly sooner than I was anticipating. Um, and so uh, for those interested, the metrics are about 1500 bucks for a 60 second ad right now inside of our pod and we have two a week. Um, so it would be $3,000 a week or 150 grand a year roughly, which doesn't cover the costs of running the show, but it certainly helps um, with um, things. Uh, and it's, it's, there's no play guarantee, so we don't have to have 50,000 views or 100,000 views, and it's more if we give them a play guarantee, which is pretty cool. So I, I was just a bit chuffed about that, that, that they've actually noticed the pod, and so the next step in that, and the only reason I'm sharing it is because um, people at home might be thinking, how does this podcasting game work? Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's one way to monetize. So what are you thinking on that, um, you know, as just, um, again, open riff Friday afternoon talking about um, mm. the pit, some people might see that as a, um, you know, going against the grain. Some people yeah. are like, you know, yeah, there's other pods like uh, Hermosi and whatnot that you guys, you know, I'm never going to run an ad. I'm only ever going to ask for a, a like. Is it something mm. that you guys have discussed and, and what's, your th what's your thinking on, on uh, paid ad through a, a, a podcast? I'm just looking in my email here to see if I've actually got the response. But basically, it's in my inbox here somewhere. But anyway, I wrote back to her and said, look, we would be interested in looking at it, but mm. it would be very, very dependent on what you want to advertise. Yeah. So it, it would have to absolutely serve our audience or we'll pass, but we really appreciate um, you reaching out. And so if it was a genuine fit then possibly and then also based on data and feedback and a test i mean it'd be, yeah if it blows um the, the um the like dislike ratio and whatnot up and i would want to use whatever the product or service is make sure it's a fit yeah. and all that yeah. for us our game is like because a number of times i talk to people and they say why are you doing a podcast like there's no money in podcasting right and i'm like mm. well there certainly isn't at the beginning but arguably i mean early bird has gotten out of the gate quickly um they're still in the midst of it but you know eric and i were able to invest in that company and drive traffic to it now it's not like hormozy's level like alex um <clears throat> has i saw i saw another podcast about alex's impact on school since he's invested and he's nearly tripled the website traffic to school within weeks of him becoming an investor so there's enormous value that he can accrete to the to, to the investee company. And we're sort of, in a very small way, seeing that, I guess, with Early Bird, where people were using the traffic and attention for the pod to drive it to something that we genuinely believe in. And, you know, what's the run rate now? Uh, in, based on the last 30 days, just doing a quick and dirty um, a calculation on it. Last 30 days, kind of 1.5. 1, 1. 1.5 run million rate. a year run rate. Yep. And, and you've got recurring as well on the back. But let's just say it's 1.5 million. And let's say the margin's 30%, right? Because the service company margins can be quite high. Let's just say that's what it was, right? That's $500,000 a year. And let's say it's worth three times earning as a tech company that's pretty conservative. That's a $1.5 million asset there if you just maintain where you are. 10 weeks. In 10 weeks, yeah. So is there value in podcasting? Yeah. If, because the great thing about podcasting is it's, you know, and I heard Stephen Bartlett explain this is one of the reasons I wanted to start the pod. He said, podcasting is different to like reels and shorts and stuff. That's all like a loss leader to bring people into the community and then to your mid form content, but then your long form followers, it's an opportunity to have a real discussion and develop deep trust with people. And so we've, we've uh, been building deep trust by trying to provide real information, open conversation. And when you've got that deep trust, you don't need a lot of people. You just need people who trust you. And that's why you guys are doing, well, you've got a great thing and you're doing a great job. But the people that have been coming to you, there's a degree of trust there because of the relationship that's been built by the effort and time that it takes to do long form content. Mm. Um, Speaking of trust, would you trust a guy in a shirt like that? <laughs> 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 we might actually we might actually pay for this. For, for, for anyone uh, listening to this. I'll, uh, I'll do not go on YouTube and watch this. Whatever you do, <laughs> yeah. just keep listening on if, Spotify. If you or don't, Apple. if you don't mind, I'll provide the context. I'll, I'll take point on this. There was you were a, dying. I've seen well, this come up I'll, on the TV screen about 20 minutes ago, and he's just been itching. He's been itching to get this in. Well, as you probably all know, there's a bit of. Uh, a a bit of linen uh, slagging going on, on on my side. You can see that um, I've, uh, I've boycotted the linen. <laughs> so let, me, let me just put that in English. Eric gives James shit about wearing linen shirts 
effects and everything. Well, not well, not everything. Just to to uh, to maintain like a bit of a uniform. Well, not will. everything, but you are wearing linen in this video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there was a uh, an unemployable coaching uh, boat day, um, and I uh, I thought, fuck Eric, I've got him here. I've, I've grabbed the grabbed the camera crew, grabbed the mic, and uh, I'll, I'll let the I'll let the tape do the talking. Uh, let's play, let's ta- play this. Take play it away, video. Greg. So, uh, here, here we are, the unemployable coaching dinner. Just got a, a question for the the main man here, Eric. You're wearing some new threads here, mate. Um, a, wondering just did you uh, did you do this yourself uh, on purpose, or uh, was it was it your wife that did this? This is 100% Egyptian cotton, <laughs> 2,000 count. Wow. Straight from Bangladesh. And so, out of 10, mate, how do you think you'd rate it uh, for you and the probability of, of the shirt on the night? Honestly, I've got three phone numbers tonight already. Awesome. Ryan, John, awesome. and, and Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to come back from that one. That was actually that was actually quite good. But you know what? You got to be confident to wear stuff like this. You, you know? certainly do, Eric. Like, yeah, and I think you're. I love, I'm I love, questioning uh, your confidence. I'm very, very confident. Oh, <laughs> looks like it's from the back of his grandma's sofa. I think. <laughs> Did moths get to it? Is that why there's so many holes in it? Did he pay full price for that? It looks like it's half off. <laughs> Like it belongs on a table, it's a tablecloth. Um, someone should have supplied him with some band aids. It's a bit cold out here. Kind of thing you normally catch seafood with, like a cast net or something. Right, it, it's rough, it's rough. It's horrendous. He needs to get rid of it and throw it in the bin. Damn! <laughs> His wife gave it to him, so that's all good. I understand. <laughs> hey, my wife is here, so I need to say that, but nah, it doesn't look good. <laughs> you Sorry, Nana, yeah. but yeah, Eric no. should have she should put that back. Make sure you don't dirty your white shoes. Okay, no white pants. And okay. it, now, can you tell me, is this linen? 100% linen, Eric. When was the last time you trimmed? Oh, mate, <laughs> a, a, a week after you, mother. <laughs> All right, my, my, so I just uh, just want to say that score is officially leveled. And I, how many, I knew, how many I beers had you guys gone. had in that? You I actually, I actually like you were, don't drink. So I, I actually I was, don't drink I, alcohol. And I was driving. I had like one forced margarita. So that was That's all. it? That, yeah, oh, pretty much. Oh, man. We had fun with that. That was though. a very funny I knew day. He was, I knew he was up to something because on the pod, I'm definitely, I think, a few points ahead. But that probably brings us, yeah, to close to even now, I'd say. <laughs> close. But, but I think Greg's working on something else in the background <laughs> that, he, that he just showed so me. So this is like that round, he just showed me today. Round one, is that what we're saying? <laughs> he is just showed me. To, to be continued, to be continued. Um, <laughs> um, I, I love that you guys are uh, allocating staff resources wisely here. Um, <laughs> the 1% spec. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right. All right. So listen, I want to talk about one last thing uh, before we wind it up today. This one might be a little shorter for a Friday sesh, but um, we are announcing the dates of the first ever unemployable live event, and that is going to be happening on October, October 12th and 13th, most likely at the Brisbane Convention and Exhibition Centre in Brisbane. So this is something that has been... Um, requested by a lot of people from our past, like for those of you who know me, um, uh, I used to run a company called Reliable Education. We used to run large live events, super fun, unbelievable opportunity to get together. And uh, we really just wanna basically take this podcast and bring it to the stage. And instead of coalescing around Amazon, which is what Reliable was, we want it to be around entrepreneurs, wealth builders, anybody who's basically unemployable, whether they literally are unemployed now, or they plan to be in the future. Um, it's going to be a live representation of the podcast. Eric, are we going to see you in the doily shirt or what? No, no, I'll, I'll be proper suited up for that one. <laughs> but I, I want to ask you one yep. question. For those of you guys that don't know, Brisbane, the uh, Brisbane Convention Center <clears throat> is where we went on Sunday night, mm-hmm. which we were just talking about seeing um, Stephen Bartlett, Diary CEO, and we were in the same room right, that you put on an event, mm. the, one of the last events, I think it the was. Last, the last the last the, the last event. It was the exact same room and with probably the same amount of people. Mm. So you got Stephen Bartlett, Diary CEO, multi, multi-millionaire, and, uh, you know, got, got a lot of presence uh, with the podcast and, and a huge amount of relevance. And you were the one on stage with that amount of people 
And actually, when I walked in there, the first thing I thought of was like, I remember being in mm. this room and meeting so many cool people. And I think John Howard was speaking at that one. Was he it was. John Howard? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. John Howard was speaking at that one. How does it make you feel knowing that you were Steve Bartlett there on stage, that you created that speaking to the 3,000 people? It was crazy, honestly. Like did you, when did I, you take a moment? Like I did. You, For three days, too. It wasn't just it was three, three, three hours. Three, it was three, three days. There's three a bit of a difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was three days. And we had the Great Hall, which is where that was. And we had the room next door to feed people. Um, I remember. That was massive. It was an excellent event. Yeah. And that, I mean, the sandwiches alone was $750,000 for three days. Uh, when I say sandwiches, it was tea and coffee, morning tea, afternoon tea, the whole thing. Um, and we're going to do that again where we provide the food, the, the whole thing, so that when you come, you have this rock star time from start to finish. But, um, mate, it was... It, uh, when I walked in there, it really brought back a lot of memories. I remember I've got photos, you know, um, of walking those halls with my team at that time um, and being in the green room with John Howard. Like, that alone was just mm. amazing when you walk in there and there's a the former PM sitting there with his... Um, you know, people in tow. And it was, yeah, the whole event was amazing, absolutely amazing. And, you know, I've, mo I've moved on a fair bit from there um, in myself, you know, like what I'm genuinely um, excited about this time, it's not the Adam show, it's, it's about unemployable as a team. Like I'll be on stage with you guys as some of my best friends in the world. And it's not about Amazon being this system to make money that everybody's looking to one person and one system and all of that. It's about the spirit of entrepreneurship, which is what really juices me. Amazon doesn't juice me. Um, it's not, you know, everyone knows how I feel about Amazon now, very mixed feelings, but my feelings around entrepreneurship and the impact that it has on people's lives and the options that it opens up and, and the goodness that can be uh, done on the back of entrepreneurship that's my heart and soul yeah. and it will be till I die. Whereas reliable was a vehicle yeah. that you used to make money, you know? Well, actually I say that poorly. Amazon was a vehicle you used to make money. Reliable was about people and it was about community. And that's, that's the piece I love and can't wait to bring back. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, it won't be as big as the, the last reliable event. I don't think I guess we're really wrong, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that we get a few hundred people there for this first one. Uh, and if you're listening to this, you know, what happened with Reliable was it, interesting. I spoke to the girl this morning, Eric, and it looks like it's going to be in the same room that the first Reliable one was in. And what happened over every year, people came back. As soon as we released tickets, the same people there last year bought immediately for the next event because it's such a great time. But people collected the wristbands and we'll do the same thing again. And so when you're five or six summits in you'll have all of the wristbands if you attended the event and people wore those with pride to say i'm part of the og community here i've been here from day one and we've got some really cool ideas that yeah. eric and i've already been tossing around we're gonna i'll let one out of the bag we're gonna have a system that when you register at the front desk and, and get welcomed there will be some things given to you that you wear on your person that will identify you to others and be conversation starters so if you are a young entrepreneur looking for a business partner, there'll be a pin or a, a sign on you that people can say, oh, Sam, you've got a business idea, tell me about it. Or if he's looking for investment, there'll be an opportunity for people who have got startups that need investors, we'll have a special breakout room like where there's uh, the opportunity to go and speed date and talk to these young entrepreneurs and hear what they're after. So you'll be able to find business partners, be able to find investors, be able to find opportunities, all sorts of stuff. And we'll like, have a special one. <laughs> we'll have a special <laughs> one. I was just we'll have that. one big one for James. I was about to say, right? I fucking just got and I'm not sure who he's looking for right. at this stage. Comment below. I'm, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure if he's looking for a <laughs> wife <laughs> or something else. I was about else. to say, I've already got mine. I've got you covered, Eric. I've got yours. <laughs> should we, like, comment below. Should maybe, we have, maybe rainbow colored. You should never we know. have a pin? Should we have a pin oh, for single people at the event so if you're single and you're looking to mingle <laughs> single and looking for cash <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, maybe looking, look, looking for investment <laughs> yeah. you could definitely find some uh, some rich daddies there eh? yeah exactly <laughs> so um so that's one of the ideas to to bring the audience alive so that you're not just sort of going into a room full of strangers there's going to be one two three or four things pinned to people's 
you know, <laughs> lanyard saying, you know, <laughs> be, be careful yeah. when you go there. <laughs> Pinned, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be you guys, total degenerates. I seriously work with degenerates. No, but, but it's going to be so fun, right? Like, I, I think we're missing events. Like, we went to the event that Early Bird, uh, Early Bird put on, um, Sam and Chris, on the weekend. And it was a smaller event, but like, how was the energy in the room? People were just loving it. And the you launch know? party too. Yeah, the launch party, mm. the, the the boat, live um, events, the <clears throat> unemployable boat yeah. um, trip that we did, like live events. Uh, but you got to do it right. And I know, like, obviously, you know, I'm chuffed just being involved because the standards um, and experience that Adam has in this space is like no other event really that that I've been to. Uh, especially that last reliable event it was unbelievable. The food, just the organization, it's. it's it's top class, yeah. Top yeah, to of give class. people. I mean, we spent two million dollars on that event, um, and we won't be, you know, um, as big, but we're certainly going to approach it with the same standards. Yeah. And all, all we'd ask for you guys listening is, when we announce it, um, we're going to offer a really good deal if you jump in and buy your ticket straight away, because these events are heavy to cash flow. You know, they're expensive to run these events. They cost a shitload of money and especially catered events. That's why yeah. most events you go to in Australia, they don't cater them. Like if you go to a Tony Robbins event or you go to any of them, there's never catering unless you buy the VIP ticket. The reason that we cater it, the, the way I think about it is you walk out of the convention center, you're gonna go and get a shitty sandwich or something. You're gonna wait and line up. You might spend 30 bucks, right? And I can tell you now we pay, I think it's a hundred and something dollars for the catering package per head. We just put that on the ticket. The main reason we do it, you're better off paying the extra 70 bucks to just walk in the room next door and for an hour have this incredible networking opportunity for yep. just a little Especially bit extra Especially if you know who you're going to be talking to, right? Especially when you know, hey, this person here is an investor looking to you know, back an entrepreneur. You know, This person here is a eight-figure a year business owner and that, that will be something that you'll be able to just see by looking at their lanyard, right? So we, we think it's going to be really, really exciting. And the networking, like you said, the, the launch party at Early Bird, I mean, that, that thing was just like wall to wall. We had eight-figure sellers. We had private bankers. Yep. We had all sorts of people there. People didn't want to leave. No. And then last weekend when we had the Early Bird event, people didn't want to leave. Stephen Bartlett, I would have loved to have known who was in that room. They were all pretty sharp-looking people. So... It'll be two days, not three. Uh, we're going to do two days, Saturday and Sunday. Probably the Brisbane Convention Centre, assuming that their contract comes in okay. It'll be catered and it'll be fun and there'll be a really diverse range of speakers on entrepreneurship, uh, maybe a little bit on uh, real estate as well. And, uh, and then we'll play it by ear. But ultimately, it's going to be an event for you guys listening. So give us the feedback after the event. We'll certainly be asking for it. And... Uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Just entrepreneurship. Like, how fun is it? Yeah, it's just a lot of work. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into it. But, like, all these events, like the event on the weekend and, and like, the early bird launch, like, I was just trying to introduce as many people as possible to each other because I know that there's businesses that yeah. are going to be created out of that. There's going to be relationships that are going to be created for years to come that those people, if you're not in the room right? You're not going to meet these people. And I, I look at the, the early bird event. I mean, not that we can fit a lot more people, but there's so many people that I know that need to be in that room. And when you sit, <clears throat> when I hear of, of, of Sam and Chris going, you know, we've, we've done X amount of discovery calls and we've closed this amount of people. And I'm like, the people that you didn't close that said, no, there's, there's two things. Either they're too small and they don't have the funds yet, or they just don't understand because there's no way you could be sitting there going, no, I don't need AI to be implemented in my business. Or they looked at Sam's dodgy mustache. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, actually, it's actually AI. It's, it's not real. But, it's all AI. But, but also, those no's aren't no's. They're just no, not yet. Yeah. Correct. And you wait till the, the, their competitors are doing it. Then they'll be like, I should have done that when I was when I had, and but, but before the price went up. You know? Yeah, but imagine investing in it like in yourself now. It's like us with the podcast, right? We started... Mm -hmm. Uh, when we started probably yeah. about you know what well, I sent you guys a video just last yeah, week yeah, yeah, where I, I showed you that that was a hundred and that was eight what was eight it? months ago maybe eight months ago yeah, when eight we months started ago when, it was, when it was out. empty and, and you look at that and if we didn't start it then when we started now we'd be eight months behind right mm -hmm. and I I, uh, I don't know if it was you that asked Stephen Bartlett or he asked how many subscribers we have within he, yeah, four I months yeah. and he actually said that 
he doesn't think he had that amount of subscribers in that short, uh, short amount of he time. He asked me when I met him, he said, how many subs you got on Unemployable? And I said, about 2,000. And he said, how long have you been going? I said, four months. So we started fitting out eight months ago. First pop was mid-December, so about four months. Yeah. yeah, and he said I didn't have that many on Diary of CEO when I started, which is amazing. And, and, when, and when you look at it, like two thousand. But I remember when we hit a hundred, and then five hundred, yeah. and then a thousand, and we hit two thousand, right? But now I think uh, we're at, you know close to twenty two hundred or so. But we're um, to get that extra two hundred is a lot quicker at the moment. I feel. Yeah, you we know? It doesn't that. feel like not too long ago there was two thousand, and it's just like. Again, those one percent that just compound day over day over day over day, and then all of a sudden you'll be at ten thousand, and then hundred thousand, and then and it goes from but there. You can't right? fake YouTube subs, you know; it's, yeah. they're real, and you have to earn them, which is really cool. What I loved about that early bird event, my favorite part was when we walked in, and on the screens you had all the logos of your clients. Mm. That's the receipts of all the work that you know, going finishing at five a.m. in the morning when you turn up and work through. Yeah. There's no getting around that. And you said something there, business is so much fun. And I remember Sam came up to me when we arrived and, he, and he, everything was happening. And he said, Adam, 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 we did 52 grand this week. <laughs> I remember the look at his face. We did 52 grand in sales. <laughs> and, and I remember when I was 22 and I, I, mean, I never made 52 grand in a week. Maybe I did. Actually, I don't know. But it was pretty cool. It was yeah. like uh, the, just to see the joy on his face and... But it, it came from work. It came from yeah. real work, voluminous yeah. work. And just seeing, I mean, both of you guys, but just seeing Chris owning that room, mm. the oh, confidence, incredible. The, the confidence oozing out of him, you know, dressed in his nice dress shirt, like just running the room with so much confidence and authority. Like I, just, I was just like, yeah, this guy believes in himself. Yeah, you the know? two of you together. Is you guys are, bold. yeah, you guys are. Chris, Chris is a monster. Like he's one of those guys. When he talks, you can just tell he's, he loves it. Yeah. He just he lives mm. and breathes this stuff. Yeah. The Perry together is amazing. Yeah, great. All right. Thanks for coming in uh, today, Sam. Um, we, we, we'll have you back at some point as you keep going and keep growing. Absolutely. It's going to be really exciting to see what you guys do with that business and, you know, just keep serving the clients, keep delivering at a high level. And uh, those 1%, mate, I know you'll crush that. We'll see which one grows faster, the business of the mustache, eh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching. This has been another Friday session. Please drop comments below. Let us know what you think of the session, how we can improve. Let us know what you think of the uh, upcoming Unemployable Live, the first one, October 12, 13, in Queensland, probably at the convention center. Let us know if you're amped for that. We're also going to be starting we've got another announcement coming soon that's going to be really cool for all of you guys that are following us. It's completely free and it's going to connect you together more as well. Uh, lots going on. So thank you for being here for another episode. Leave us a comment below. James, thanks for being here. Sam, thanks for being here. And Eric, thank you for being here. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys here same time next week on Friday. Bye for now.